Hello. All right. How are you doing, everybody? Um, it is now time for us to jump into 1988. And this feels like a quantum leap from 1987. Um, it really does. Uh, although it's going to take a little while to get there. Uh, so we're not going to rush straight into the new paradigm yet, but uh, we're going to start things off with uh, a band who've been on the last few Now albums. Uh, this is, of course, always on my mind. Elvis cover, uh, make of it what you will, but it was certainly a big hit. Uh, one of the Pet Shop Boys' biggest hits. Uh, also one of their first uh, covers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, this kicks things off in the sort of... Uh, style that we've come accustomed to now uh this is now followed by another song that made number one uh heaven is a place on earth belinda coil oil let's have a quick listen uh this was belinda's first solo song after being with the go-go's uh absolutely massive here uh, the views on this one will almost probably be a billion uh, <laughs> it's funny how the songs that have the most views also have the most ads isn't it go figure uh, so heaven is a place on earth. I think in the states this has already been a huge hit, 1987, but it took till the beginning of '88 to make it in UK. Yeah, 24 million. Uh, wow, 24 million views as of uh, well as of now really. Uh, musically, it's very much of a Belinda Carlisle sound. Uh, she certainly developed a sound of her own. It's, I guess it's still kind of rockish pop rock but it's pop 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 rock uh big choruses generally good songwriting uh incredibly high budget as you could imagine uh but she was a good a good uh, front person a good singer um uh, and uh yeah okay number three get out of my dreams get into my car well there you go uh billy ocean uh, not one of his most remembered songs, but I think it was a pretty big hit for being number three listing on a Now album. Must have had some impact. Uh, and I think that might well have been his last hit of the 80s. Uh, so what I'd call a legacy hit there, if you like. Uh, Billy Ocean obviously had had numerous hits throughout the 70s and 80s. Number four, Jermaine Stewart with Very Forgotten Say It Again. Everyone's heard of We Don't Have To Take Our Clothes Off, but nobody's heard of Say It Again. It's not a bad song, uh, but there's really nothing uh, memorable about it. Uh, I guess it's kind of a slinky soul, you'd call it, but yeah. <laughs> right, number five, a relatively well-known song, Eddie Grant, Give Me Hope, Joanna. Uh, it's nowhere near as good as stuff like Electric Avenue, uh, and it's a bit kind of uh, jolly, 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 but obviously great lyrics. Uh, meaningful song uh, so yeah it's, it's okay it's ni nice to have it around in the charts and on and now a uh, very strange running order here because uh, we go from Eddie Grant to Eddie Cochran uh, and musically they couldn't be more holes apart uh, come on everybody another old song re-released a classic song really really great song timeless uh, timeless rock and roll uh, so that gets us to number six, followed by Swadehead by Morrissey. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that was his first solo hit. I really can't remember it uh, because, to be honest, there's only about one solo Morrissey song, Every Day is Like Sunday, which we'll come on to, that I really uh, can really recall. Uh, it just, his solo stuff, to me, totally lacks the interesting nature of the Smiths. But, you know, I'm sure there's people going to hate me for saying that. Because solo Morrissey's not, not really of interest to me. Uh, right, number eight. <laughs> Here we go, then. Uh, this is a weird one. Especially knowing now, no... I can't say it. Knowing what we now know. It's Candle in the Wind, of all things, by Elton. Uh, it's a live recording. I think it was Australia or somewhere. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm just trying to do the maths. Nine years later, uh, the song would be repurposed uh, after the death of uh, Princess Diana. Uh, but this was the original version. It was obviously done in front of an adoring audience. Uh, it's not one of my favourite Elton songs, even less so now, I guess. Uh, and the thing, the thing is, the Diana version's pretty much killed off the original, hasn't it? Strange, strange, strange song. I mean, it's interesting, 
maybe another uh, long and winding road style documentary about it uh, and how we came to do the Diana one and you know what what the deal was behind the scenes. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's certainly strange side that side one, uh, and it doesn't seem particularly now. Bearing in mind, it's got two at least two old songs, three old songs on there. Uh, okay, uh, we now go to Angel Eyes, which I'm really not going to play by where, where, where. I'm going to line up uh, one or few down. You might have a long wait because there's a fair few bland ones here. I know what. Uh, you'll hear the music before I come onto it, but I really can't be asked to play any of the others. Uh, yeah, so you've got uh, side two now kicking off with uh, Angel Eyes, Wet, Wet, Wet. Uh, just a sort of Spandau Ballet esque uh, ballad. Uh, with some really bad lyrics, just really lame right words. Uh, but, it, you know, it's, I suppose it's classy, but it's uh, it's not really for me. Turn Back the Clock, a very dreary Johnny H jazz song. Uh, they're dreary at the best of times, and for them that's, like, mega dreary. Uh, I'd rather beat the clock than turn back the clock. Valentine by Tapau, not one of their better ones. Uh, after the stunning heart and soul... And uh, OK, China in a hand. Uh, Valentine was, was pretty weak, to be honest. Right, this is number 12. This is an all-time classic. Uh, I think, oh, actually, this is his first appearance on a Now album, which is quite surprising. Uh, Billy Idol, Hot in the City. Also not a new song for 1988. Uh, I think it was originally released in 1982. But I tell you what, it's not dated at all in those six years. Uh, which just goes to show how ahead of its time it was when it was done. Uh, it's Keith Forsey at the helm again. It learned a lot from his stuff with Moroder uh, and traded in drumsticks for a mixing desk. He was producing. You've got Billy Idol and his band on here. It's a really good blend of uh, rock and roll, new wave, post-punk, synth pop, normal pop, American pop, uh, and yeah, it's uber 80s. Uh, if you've seen The Wedding Singer, great cameo from Billy Idol in that. Uh, and in a way, you could say that his stuff kind of went really dated into the 90s. But I think now we come out the other side and I think we're starting to reappraise Billy Idol uh, and just see how sort of great his songs really were. Uh, I'd hope so anyway, and I'll do my part to spread the word. So, great song, uh, possibly the best yet. Hot in the City, Billy Idol. Uh, but... It's Moment in the Sun. It's not going to be very long because on its tails is another brilliant song. Uh, this is the first song ever for, or the first hit in the UK, certainly, for Sinead O'Connor and it's Mandinka. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, this this just set Sinead off on the, on the, the weird and wonderful path that she's been on ever since. Uh, for someone who's not had that many actual hits, she's certainly high profile, uh, as Alan Partridge said, bald chap ripped up the Pope. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I really like her. I, I think she's great. I think she's really sincere. Uh, I think she's kind of beautiful. Uh, Nothing Compares to You is obviously a great song. I don't think she was always right about everything, uh, but I'd probably just have a good old dialectic with her if we disagreed on anything. Uh, musically, though, this song's really fresh. And, uh, again, it's... I'd say we're really getting towards the 90s now. Uh, this this is very 90s in aesthetic. Um, it's it's yeah, it's kind of indie alternative, but uh, you can't really categorise her. She's so unique. Um, it's got a really good driving rhythm, great vocals, obviously. Um, just a great song, a really really good song. Uh, the kind of stuff that really should be in the charts, in my opinion. Followed up by local lads, uh, The Mission. Obviously, I'm not from Leeds, you can tell from my accent, but that's where I live. That's from Hold Up now, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and from just the other side of the Air Valley, it's The Mission and Tower of Strength, one of their biggest songs. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It's quite slow. It's probably the most gothic track to make a Now album so far. Uh, possibly The Dam, The Shadow of Love. Uh, but even then, it's only at the kind of uh, sort of outside edge of golf. Uh, but it's a good crossover song. Okay, after the brilliance of uh, Here I Go Again by White Snake, followed up by the kind of lameness of Give Me All Your Love, uh, which is pretty bad, really. 
Uh, it's 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 kind of metal, but it's it's very uh, bad lyrics, just absolute dross, really, uh, which is a shame because I want to like it. Right, okay. Now, some might say the next song's dross. Uh, I wouldn't possibly comment. It's the very first single from Kylie, and it's I Should Be So Lucky. Uh, so, little did we know when this one came out just how far Kylie's career would go. Uh, as a song, when it first came out, before there was any hoo ha, I, I used to like Neighbours. I, I, I knew her as, uh, what was her name? Charlene. Uh, I used to really like Neighbours. Uh, this song came out, it just sounded very average to me, uh, really nothing special, and I don't think it is. So why is it taken off? Uh, what is it about it? I, I think it's just something about Kylie herself, really, more than the songs. Uh, I really do think she, she, something about her as a person takes these otherwise pretty shit songs, to be honest, and um, just makes them really popular. It's the ultimate pop star. Um, if you've got any ideas what it is about Kylie that really uh, resonates or resonated throughout the late 80s and even into the 90s, even up to the noughties, that uh, can't get you out of my head and stuff. Anyway, that's Kylie, uh, and that's followed up by another uh, Stock Aitken and Waterman one. That's the way it is. More Mel and Kim, nowhere near as good as uh, showing out. Uh, they're really kind of just repeating themselves over and over now uh, and getting worse and worse each time. But we've got another real, real classic now, another proto-90s song uh, coming in. This is very much that bridge between 80s soul uh, which has been on these nows for a few albums now, and the beginnings of kind of a more 90s uh, soul, really. Uh, it's Joyce Sims, uh, brilliant intro, Come Into My Life. Uh, this this is another absolute classic, so classic beat, uh, great guitar, great pianos, great vocals. She'd had another song called All In All that I really liked. That was quite a carnival song, uh, but this is pure soul. Uh, it's just very sophisticated. Uh, I don't really want to be talking all over it. Uh, it's just a classic, really. Really, really good song. That is followed up by Jelly Bean yet again with Who Found Who. Uh, not as good as the real thing. A uh, bit meh, really. A bit sub-Madonna. That's followed up by Banana Rama and I Can't Help It, uh, which is... Uh, third rate <laughs> more stock aching and waterman they're getting a bit formulaic by now interesting cover next dollar of all people their one and only uh, entrance onto a now album uh and it's an old erasure song a uh, dollar featuring the uh infamous david van day of the burger van infamy and uh some uh, lady called Teresa bazaar i think they were going out for a while i don't know if they were when they did this Bit of a throwback, really, to 1983. Uh, it's it's almost like it should have been on Now 1. It feels more Now 1 than Now 11. Uh, but it's OK. Right, another kind of fairly kitsch classic uh, coming up. Joe La Taxi, one of the few songs entirely in French on a Now album. Uh, I don't know. I mean, she was only 14 when this came out, and it does feel like it was a bit over-sexualised. Uh, but it is a really good song. It's not the song so much, it's more just how she was marketed. Uh, Joe Le Taxi is great. Uh, there are some people who say it's about uh, those uh, taxis in uh, Thingy, Terminator, the driverless taxis. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's just about a Parisian taxi driver called Joe. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> right, followed up by a song that I still love, uh, but I'm probably the only one who does. It's Stutter App, No Sleep Till Bedtime. Morris Minor and the Makers. Sadly, the Beastie Boys didn't make it onto an now album, so the next best thing, uh, the Toasty Boys, as they sometimes called themselves. Stutter Rap is very much a pastiche of No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Uh, got some good jokes in it. It's funny. Uh, I think, to be honest, I think they probably overdid the comedy a bit in the middle of it. I think if they just kept it a bit more, almost like genuine hip-hop, I think it would have been better. I think when they shoot the guitarist and stuff, kind of jumps the shark. Uh, but I do like Tony Hawk. He's a great writer. In fact, if anything, uh, this song, uh, if, if you want to find out more about it and about Tony Hawks, read his book, One Hit Wonderland. Uh, he's written some great books, Round Island with a Freak. Uh, he's been in loads of comedy stuff. He's, he's appeared in Red Dwarf and things. So his influence lives on. 
and he's still going strong. But Morris Minor and the Majors, I think that was their only hit. Right, we come to side four now, and this is, as a side, this is a paradigm shifting side, because here now, suddenly the floodgates of house have opened, uh, and we have a whole side uh, pretty much dedicated to house and post house, uh, and we have a whole side of songs that pretty much just could not have existed on any previous now. Possibly the last two have given a few little future echoes uh, of what's to come. But we really get full-on house mania now. Uh, and we kick things off with a really great song, Bomb the Bass and Beat This. Uh, very much in the Mars paradigm, pump up the volume. So if anything, that was the innovator and this is more the imitator. But I don't really want to call Tim Simonon an imitator because he developed the idea a lot further and he went on to do way more than just this one song. Uh, so this one song is very much like Pump Up the Volume. Uh, and if you really want to hear something good, listen to Pump Up the Bitter, uh, which is a kind of <laughs> amalgam of Pump Up the Volume and this um, in a bar. Uh, yeah. All right. So we kick things off on side four with this absolute classic. Uh, this is followed up by uh, Doctor in the House by Cold Cut featuring Yaz and the Plastic Population. Cold Cut, immensely important uh, band. Uh, the cutting and scratching is now really coming into its own. Uh, Yaz obviously went on to greater things. Well, I won't say greater things, but uh, bigger things commercially. Doctor in the House, uh, That's a, it's a great cut-up house song. Uh, another really, really, really good song now, uh, which I definitely think stood the test of time. Uh, and it's one of the very first. Uh, it's Crush and House Arrest. Uh, and this was sort of a more poppy side of house. Uh, but those beats. And yeah, suddenly, I mean, literally, we're in the modern world way now, uh, aesthetically, in terms of production values. Now, of course, all this has been bubbling under before the Now album's caught up with it. Uh, and that's one thing I will say that, relatively speaking, these Now albums are pretty conservative, small C, musically. Um, you know, they take the odd risk, but really they follow rather than lead. Uh, and I'm well aware of that doing these videos. I'm under no illusions that I'm, I'm presenting you the cutting edge stuff. Uh, I'll do separate videos about that. What these are more about is where culture and popular culture was at. Uh, and I think that's what's really important now is that house music has gone straight to the overground. I even remember this song on Pebble Mill or something like that, introduced by Alan Titchmarsh or someone, from QD Spires. Okay, this is followed by a rather more obscure one, The Jack That House Built. Have you noticed that the last three songs have all had the word house in the title, as does the next one? Uh, Jack and Chill, very clever. Uh, it's a relatively anonymous one, uh, but it's, 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 it's perfectly good. Uh, it's then followed by another really good one, something that would come to be called Hip House, uh, very briefly. Uh, and it's basically the Beatmasters and uh, the Cookie Crew rocked a house. So you've got a kind of production house band. Uh, yeah. And uh, you've got the Cookie Crew bringing in the hip hop. Uh, this is great. This is really good pianos. Uh, Chunky beats, good attitudes in the rhymes, good rhyming. I don't know what happened to them, they did a few. Beatmasters did a few, Cookie Crew did a few. Uh, I think the Beatmasters went on to introduce us to Betty Boo, uh, and Cookie Crew did a song with Edwin Starr. Uh, so two, two good acts come together on a great song. Right, a another real kind of weird one next. Two men, a drum machine and a trumpet. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there might be, I often am. That was basically the guys from the Fine Young Cannibals, minus Roland, the singer. Uh, but they've done a full-on sort of house song, really. It's, it's fairly light house, and it's got lots of trumpet in it. Uh, but it's, it's, I guess it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's, uh, well, it's definitely house. It's got a house beat. Uh, I'm tired of getting pushed around. Finally, on this really good side so far, another one that opinion is divided on. Uh, this is Climby Fisher, Rise to the Occasion. Now, you've got to get the right mix of this because Climby Fisher were really not a house band at all. Uh, they were basically uh, 
a more kind of, well, AOR, a middle of the road band, as uh, their next single, Love uh, Love Changes Everything, would, would show. And the original version of Rise to the Occasion uh, was, uh, was a ballad, really, a, a pretty dire, well, not dire, but just a, a tepid ballad. Someone, somewhere, stuck that tune to this beat. Uh, and this beat really works. It's a real culture clash. Uh, loads of samples in there and stuff. This sort of bass line going up and down. They called it the hip hop mix, but it's not really hip hop. Uh, it's not really house because it's too slow. It's it's kind of pop, uh, but it's pop with with samples and cut ups and stuff. Uh, and it actually works really well. Uh, so yeah, interesting way to end the side. Uh, now eleven then. It's definitely an album of uh, one quarter and then the other third, the other three quarters. Side four is excellent and it's, you could pretty much just leave it on. Uh, side four really is the paradigm shifting side uh, and now now albums would never ever revert back to before House Now. Uh, house is here, House is here to stay uh, and there ain't no going back. If you don't like House, uh, that writes off a lot of the Now albums from here onwards. That aside, uh, there's still a lot of indie on this one. There's a lot of stuff that would go on to pave the way for 90s indie. You've got people like uh, Morrissey Solo. Uh, you've got uh, Sinead O'Connor. Uh, all right, the mission a bit more 80s, I suppose. Uh, Belinda Carlo coming in on a more kind of AOR side. Uh, so all in all, it's a really good album. A really, really good album. Uh, what's the stinkers on here? White Snake, Give Me All Your Love's Pretty Bad. There's a few substandard Stock Aiken and Mortimer ones. Kylie, Mel and Kim, Banana Rama. Um, so, yeah, there, there are some duff tracks on here, but the good ones more than make up for it. And above all, it's really nice to see now uh, transitioning uh, quite radically. This feels like the most radical now album uh, to date, really. Uh, it really feels like they've given it a rethink. I've not really talked about the logos and stuff. Uh, this has still got the uh, the three uh, coloured uh, lights, red, blue and green, uh, and they'd keep that up till the end of the 80s. Uh, but it's just starting to look a bit more modern now, uh, certainly sounding it, although <laughs> it's still like 32 years old, so it's all relative. Uh, but we're definitely, we're in a world where things like house and hip-hop are starting to, uh, to have a lot more uh, resonance. All right, everyone, thank you very much.